so let's talk about the concept of menopause okay so see as per ayurveda the you remember the five elements we talk about earth water fire air and space right mm-hmm. and out of these five elements uh, for menopause we are generally considering about two doshas two doshas which are made up of vata and pitta but in menopause specifically we are talking about some some vitiation some imbalance in the pitta dosha in the body right. and in the vata dosha in the body okay so pitta and vata so pitta is made up of two elements which is fire and water mm-hmm. okay and your vata which is a another bioenergy in the body is made up of the two ele- uh, two other elements which is air and space got it mm-hmm. so this pitta and vata gets imbalanced okay now as per what you told me during the consultation your lifestyle and your food let's talk about that as you are the person uh, who works in all time zones in the world like 3 to 4 different time zones in the world you work mm-hmm. so there is no routine at all for you no one you do not have a good routine you work any time whenever you get a call you wake up you work then you try to sleep then again you don't get a sound sleep right mm-hmm. so imagine um how much uh disharmony you have on the doshic level in your body okay so uh, there are certain energies active in certain time of the day so morning write it down 6 am to 10 am is a kapha time 6 to 10 am is a kapha time kapha the third energy kapha okay okay the second time is pitta time which is 10 am to 2 pm am and pm both okay that is your pitta time mm-hmm. and your vata time is 2 to 6 am and pm okay mm-hmm. so these energies are naturally active in your body when you have uh, when you are connected with the nature and you and nature goes together that means you we wake up with the sun we go down with the sunset that is what the natural way of uh connecting with the nature the more you connect with the nature the more you start connecting yourself and behaving yourself as like the nature's call then it is easy for the body to adjust with, on the energy level Okay. okay okay but now when you uh, when we went through your consultation you told me that sometimes you sleep at 1 a.m. 2 a.m. 3 a.m. sometimes you are working whole night this is our modern time these are our modern thinking that we work throughout the night and we sleep during the day or because of our uh, uh techno technical world we do not have the routines sometimes uh when you have production going on when you have work going on or when because of your um, style of the work maybe whatever you told me you do charities and you work for many different countries different time zones so you do not have your own body set clock you just dance or you just work or you just move as per your calls or your work style right mm-hmm. so that all is going to imbalance into you strongly because 10 pm or 10 to 2 is your pitta time in the body and you are always active in that time mm-hmm. right so there is a lot of strong vitiation imbalance is going to happen into your pitta in the body are you understanding what i'm saying 
Okay. Yeah. So pitta ha has a fire within it, and it has a water within it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to increase the fire. It's going to increase the acidic level. It's going to increase the toxins in the body. This is the time where the good transformation, good changes, good detoxification, supposed to happen in the body. If you keep yourself calm, if you are in the sleep, if you are in the deep sleep, these are the works the pitta supposed to do. The changes, the transformation, the metabolic activities, the detoxification. These are the functions of the pitta in the body. Mm -hmm. But because of our way of uh, living lifestyle, we do not give this time to the, uh, to the pitta. Right? And then this pitta is not going to be happy and it's going to get aggravated because the bodily functions, the pitta, what it does in the body, okay, it is the energy of digestion. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now you told me that you do not feel good when you wake up. You feel groggy. That is what you use the word. Mm -hmm. I feel groggy in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's not a good thing to feel in the morning. You're supposed to feel light. You're supposed to feel energetic. You're supposed to feel enhanced. You're supposed to feel, oh, today is my day. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This, there should be some sharpness. In, uh, there should be some lightness. There should be a good energy flow when you wake up in the morning. But the first thing when you feel like I, ha I feel groggy, I feel tired, I am like this, mm -hmm. I am tired. Body is not, uh, that means there is so much imbalance in the body. There is so much accumulation of ama in your body. There is so much accumulation of toxins in your body. That is called it as a ama in Ayurveda. Okay? Because the function of the pitta is digestion, absorption, assimilation, nutrition in the body. And it maintains the, the temperature, the body temperature. <laughs> Write down the question for me. Yeah, okay. So it, it maintains the body temperature in the body. Okay? It is the energy uh, on mental level, it creates the anger, jealousy, irritability, mm -hmm. aggression, mm -hmm. overly controlling, judgmental, critical. These are the things we will see when Pitta is, is aggravated in the body on the mental level. Mm -hmm. On the physical level, when Pitta is aggravated, you will see indigestion, you will see acid reflux, you will see burning sensation, you will not, you will see discomfort in the chest, you will see a lot of accumulation of uh, uh, kind of a sensation of acid coming out of your mouth, you know, like mm -hmm. vomiting kind of sensation, nausea kind of sensation. Mm -hmm. That is because of the aggravated pitta in the body. Okay. okay. And then when this pitta is aggravated over the period of time, what happens is like maybe it can create, if there is this acidic level which is coming, oozing out of the stomach and coming to the esophagus, coming to the top of the, or coming towards the face side, right? That's the backflow. That's the opposite direction. That's where right. another vata is working in that case. So that's why this is a vata, pitta vata dis, uh, disharmony in the body. And the, the way you told me about your diet, the way you told me about your lifestyle, the way you told me about your work style, the way you told me about your, uh, your way of living life at the present moment because you have so many things, to, uh, so many things on your plate mm -hmm. as per you, mm -hmm. you are disturbing a huge pitta and vat in you. And, that is, and now you feel like you are going towards the menopause, which is a age as per age you feel like oh you are towards the menopause and also you have a mental factor which you feel mentally that oh my my sister is going to the menopause mm. and my all the people surrounding me are going to the menopause mm. and i feel like i am going through the menopause yeah, exactly. right so when you feel like that right that is like something on the physical level some changes are happening in the body at the same time, you're feeling mentally too, right? Mm -hmm. But on the physical level, you're feeling hot flashes or you're feeling daha. That is called it as a hot flash in Ayurveda, uh, sorry, in the modern. But uh, the, uh, there is a sensation, there is a hot feeling. You, you feel the body temperature. This is what Pitta controls this. So when Pitta is balanced, these are all the activities supposed to be going happening properly. But when Pitta is imbalanced because of our way of living and lifestyle, you are going to feel all these uh, symptoms of the 
menopause, which is a hormonal imbalance in Ayurveda. And the hormonal imbalance in Ayurveda is a is a uh, is a controlled or uh, is a governed by the pitta dosha in the body are you getting what i'm saying yes. understood mm -hmm. yeah so now if we need to balance your thing uh, your imbalances what you are feeling mm -hmm. we will take some some diet change we will not eat the food which is three state three tests of the food we are not going to eat sour sour i can't eat sour. S O U R, sour, salty. So sour, salt, and uh, the third one I would like to. In you specifically, I really do not want to use um, spicy, as you told me that you love the Thai chilies. Ah. Oh. I also love the Thai chilies, but but if we have this much imbalance, I think it is not a good option for us to eat the Thai chilies at the present moment. Okay, so avoid the sour, avoid the salt, avoid the uh, excessive of using of the chilies and spices and fermented and acidic and too much preserved food, too much canned food. Um, this is all going to uh, create the havoc into the, your pitta in the body. Okay? This is uh, about the pitta. Now, what are the suitable food you can use for your pitta in the body? The food which you can use is the another three tests. The sweet is good. The astringent is good. Yeah. And... Um, the, the, there is another one more test. Uh, I don't know whether you will love it or not, but that's a bitter test. The, have you ever heard about the bitter melon? Okay, then so, you're good. Oh, okay, here you go. So, bitter, astringent, and uh, in your case, I, I like to have some nourishing effect. So, we'll stick with the sweet test in you. Okay, so these three tests I will prefer in your diet maximum compared to the other test. Good? Mm -hmm. uh, now you got the base? Understood the base? The imbalances and how we can counteract. And now we are considering what is imbalanced in you. And we are helping some of the herbs which we will, uh, you, you can involve some of the teas, some of the spices in your food. Now write it down the spices what you need as per your imbalance in the body at the present moment. So I would like you to use coriander, fennel, cardamom, cumin, and cinnamon. These are the teas and these are the spices. I would like you to use in your diet and in your cooking when you're cooking your food. Got it? Write it down. So you can use them in excess form because this is a food form. So if you use, if, if you want to drink the water, you make the teas out of it and drink that water, sip that water throughout the day. The same like the last one, what you wrote. Can I repeat one more time? Cinnamon, coriander, cumin, fennel, okay, and cardamom, got it? So you can alternate. In the food, if you are eating the food, cooking the foods, uh, decorating the food, that's the wrong word, but that's what I see, like sprinkling some this much cilantro. No, cook your food with this much cilantro. In your case, this is going to help us, okay? So this this much cilantro not like decoration decorating the food like sprinkles kind of thing that's a very wrong way of doing and thinking okay mm -hmm. so uh, uh, cilantro in uh, also write it down in the in the bitter estrogen next to it you can write down cilantro you can use it parsley cilantro basil in excess form when you're cooking your food okay then cucumber is another good option to use often more during the summer time and this is our summer in the united states where we are located 
so we can definitely use this uh, cucumber the gourd family the pumpkin family that will be awesome to use during this time rich full of vitamins full of minerals richness of the food lightness in the food nourishing factors in the food it's like a blessing to have all these vegetables mm -hmm. okay so we'll stick with these vegetables but nana the most important thing for us is sleeping okay and waking up so i i don't know how you can help yourself but see if you can manage to sleep between 9 9 30 max 10 and let your body calm down ground yourself relax be in the bed go to the bed in the deep sleep at least 9 30 to 9 45 to 10 is the max and worst how about that how long that's your sleep time how many hours you want to sleep okay i will say oh sleep six hours or seven or eight hours are you really going to do that because your work style is so different compared to the other people so you see what what the best you can offer to yourself considering your occupation also okay four different time zones i don't even understand how you manage them <laughs> You must, I need to interview you one day. How you manage all the four different time zones. I was like, oh my God. And you're still so active. And how many hours you are driving to come and see me? Three hours one way? Yeah. So yesterday, I, he, uh, like when we were talking, three hours coming, three hours going, and three hours with me. I was like, oh my God. God bless you. God bless you. Any other questions for me, dear? Uh, so give me one more second. So do, uh, like the concept of ghee in Ayurveda, so that is a, another good factor for us to use a good fat into this to balance the vata in the body. So we will stick up with the, some cooking of with the ghee. Okay. And then uh, also we will go with the olive oil if you have. But uh, do not burn or boil the olive oil a lot because wow. it's supposed to go in a different way. But uh, you can cook your food with the ghee. Okay? It will calm down, cool down. It's uh, uh, pitta pacifying also. And vata, definitely it is uh, going to uh, nourish the vata, the aggravated vata. Because... If, if, you don't sleep nicely. I feel so sad for you. You need to train your body. You need to take rest of yourself. Otherwise, you will hurt yourself. Okay? You need to, because 10 to 2 is the pitta time and 2 to 6 is the vata time. You aggravate both of them, which are the main cause of having a menopause or the hormonal imbalance in the body in Ayurveda. And you disturb both of them because that is your, your time of job. Are you understanding? So just see how much mindful you will be and how much mindful you will, uh, you, uh, how, how mindfully now you will live with your diet concept, with your food concept, with your lifestyle concept and how you can take care of yourself. I'm going to give you an oil, massage oil. Massage your head. Every day you are top of the head and bottom of the feet. I really want you to start massaging yourself. At least do something for yourself. Because I know six hours driving is not easy. Coming and seeing me six hours drive every day, which you are doing for seven days. Oh, thank you so much for giving me this wonderful opportunity to help you. But I can understand people, when they take this much efforts to come and see me, they are really looking forward to Ayurveda and yoga. And they are really looking forward to some... Uh, some knowledge from the Ayurveda and some knowledge from the yoga. That's why you are driving six hours in a day for seven days. Thank you for that love. Thank you. Thank you for the knowledge. Knowledge is for all of us. Okay? There is knowledge in everything. There is We can learn from each and everything. Whatever suits our body the best and whatever the how we can help and heal ourselves. Ayurveda is the mother of all the sciences. If you see, and you are from Thailand, so you, if you know the Tibetan medicine, if you know the Thailand, if you know the Chinese medicine, if you know the, uh, the sound and uh, vibrations and all these healing techniques, if you go and if you go and find the roots, you will definitely find roots somewhere in Asia. 
okay mm -hmm. all the techniques what we bits and pieces we are learning in nowadays like i do the craniosacral therapy i do the lymphatic therapy i do the marma therapy i do the oil massages i do the bliss therapy i do the uh, yoga uh, i have i have a variations of the i do the chakra healing i do the chakra balancing i do chakra massages i do like all the different ways of healing the mind and body and soul i do the head massages mm, nice. yeah you need to tell me <laughs> last day tomorrow we can come back sure yeah you can come back again yeah, yeah we'll yes sure because he wants to do more yeah wow yeah. i think he is here now he's feeling it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm so happy to hear that Absolutely, he really like it's very important for him that he's here. He, he really, uh, he's really feeling like he's here. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that I'm just his friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sharing my knowledge, uh, my exper experience with Ayurveda and yoga. And this, see, my teacher says. Um, in this one life, it's so hard to understand all the concepts of Ayurveda. Like the way you said, Ganesha came into your dream 20 years back and you saw something like this and you saw all the symbols yes. and you started when doing... He, came, he was doing something with his hand like uh -huh. this. Um, it, it came to me. Yeah, it was something like this and his hand was under awesome. like this. Yeah, it was something. Yeah, I saw this. And you said you are a Christian. And you follow Buddhism, you follow Christianity, uh, and you follow both these cultures. And then Ganesha came into your dreams. <laughs> exactly. How pure you are. <laughs> you, you are blessed with all the cultures, wow. you know. Wow. Think about it. How much energy, uh, good energy you have, you know. Yeah. Because coming all these great people in the dreams, I just don't know what to say. I still to this day don't know what he symbolizes. He's, yes. he's the remover of obstructions in the life. Ganesha represents. Ganesha, uh, 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 Ganesha represents. There are many Ganesh mantras, and I taught him one of the other mantra. The uh, we did the Om as well as we did the Mahamrutyanjaya mantra. But Ganesha is the uh, the uh, everything starts with Ganesha in in rituals and uh, auspicious uh, settings and functions and uh, occasions. Everything starts. Ganesha is the first one we need to pray. And then comes Shiva and then comes all the gods. Oh, okay. And goddesses. Okay. Yeah. So he is the first to to offer and uh, uh, do start with Ganesha. Oh, the programs and operations. Yes. He's the first one too. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I never and, and imagine you have Ganesha in your dreams. Oh my gosh. That means a lot to yourself. Yeah. You must be definitely very, very uh, connected to the uh, energy concepts. Okay? okay? So that is awesome to know. So any, um, so this is about your diet. Okay? Remember, you should eat a lot of good rice and milk and cream and uh, the quinoa and grains and all of that. And then the good vegetables. I, I really want you to start eating more of the prunes and figs and apples and dark green leafy vegetables and you know you you carry a lot in your culture also mm -hmm. so you know that a uh, lot of dark green vegetables they will so whatever we will be doing our aim is to balance the pitta and to balance the vata for our menopause okay so for menopause these are the two things we need to consider but only you cannot just balance the pitta and vata. You need to balance your lifestyle. You need to balance your way of eating habits. You need to balance what are the good spices for you. I will give you some papers to follow. And uh, from there, you drink a nice lukewarm water throughout the day. Okay? You add some ghee if you are drinking some water. Or uh, you you soak the uh, you boil the water with these spices which I told you and uh, sip that water throughout the day, okay. The way we start the menstrual cycle uh, in our life, right? The first cycle and all of that. This is a body's call. 
coming is also a body's call and going is also a body's call. So there should not be a lot of, you know, very recently we started talking about this menopause concept. Didn't our parents and grandparents, they, they ever talked about this concept? This is a natural phenomena in the body. It's supposed to happen in the body. Right? Because you are, the, the, as we are growing, right, at certain age we start the cycle and at certain age the body is done with that cycle, mm -hmm. that concept, right? And it's a natural process. But if we are not doing uh, good followings and good uh, lifestyle and good food uh, offerings to the body, then that hurts. And that's where we get the hormonal imbalances in Ayurveda. And yes, hair also gets <laughs> dripping. I get, I have like two people I had to call for hair loss today. <laughs> it's like, uh, my hairs are falling apart. Is there anything? Yes, we will do the bliss therapy. This third eye therapy, we will do the massages. We will do the nasya. We can do a lot of therapies for the hair also. Okay. Um, and then the diet, which I show, uh, told you, dark green leafy vegetables grains uh, carbs good carbs you know combination of the carbs that all cooked warm food you know small amounts of food good combinations of food not a complex food complex food like uh, the way we said like um, the two wrong food joining together and creating the toxins for the body in the body like fish and uh, yogurt marination of the food that's all like a Complexity, complex food, incompatible food, incompatible food, fruit desserts, okay, fried ice cream, incompatible, okay, are you understanding what I'm saying, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. the sour food with the sweet, soups generally, the sour taste is there and we add a sweet into it and create the co contra food together. It's a wrong combination for the food. So uh, there is a concept of incompatible food, which we will talk maybe when I will see you for your cleansing program, because that's a huge concept. But at the present moment, what I would like you to follow is like uh, oats, that they are good. Okay. Olives, nuts, soak nuts. Yeah. Soak nuts, cucumbers, lime juice. Mm -hmm. because lime juice even if it's acidic in flavor it's sour in taste okay the post digestive effect is sweet and we are able to eat the sweet for our menopause oh, okay. okay so you have to think ayurveda is very detailed science there is so much to understand for our condition what you have for our imbalance what we have and what uh, for our body type what we have then everything changes person to person. It's all a customized way of looking at you. Okay. So, are you under? Did you get it? Why lime juice? You understood? Because it's um, acidic at first, but then in the in the body, when it enters into the body, it's after the digestion, alkaline. the effect is alkaline. Yeah. Yes. Sweet. Okay. And then you can also avoid the strong acidic and uh, fermented. Avoid. Oh no, kimchi. I can't have kimchi, kimchi for you. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm so sorry. No. Kimchi is it's all it's a whole fermented process. Kimchi. Yeah. I love it. Believe me. Believe me. I love kimchi. <laughs> but I'm so sorry for you if you're and you you don't even follow your uh, diet and lifestyle. You skip your meal. You don't even eat your meal. You don't do anything good for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you take kimchi. Oh my God. Think about it. You are burning your all the cells and tissues. If you do not eat your food properly. If you have so much pitta in the body. If you are like, you know, if there is so much disturbance in the vata and pitta. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't do any, any good and you use the kimchi. Oh, come on. It's like you have a wound on your uh, hand <laughs> and you put some salt on it. That's what your kimchi is doing to you. Okay, let me just put no kimchi. Oh, I'm not saying. I'm just <laughs> guiding you. I can't say you can do this and that, but I have to just guide you. That's okay. Okay? All right. So you're good to go now. I will see the other person. Okay. Now, uh, okay, I do you're... have a couple of questions. Let me turn this off. Okay? okay? Thank you for watching. This is about Ayurveda Healing Spa. This is Aruna Patki, live from Ayurveda Healing Spa. 
today we just talked about the concept of menopause and how what you can think about menopause in ayurveda and how ayurveda sees the menopause concept the imbalances your body type your diet your lifestyle that all plays a huge role to to balance your menopause and yes menopause is definitely it's an imbalance created by the pitta and the vata so you need to do certain things which are favored to this you need to use certain herbs certain spices certain lifestyle certain food certain combinations of the food to correct your imbalance thank you once again this is aruna patki the ayurvedic physician a massage therapist a uh, craniosacral therapist a coder and a yoga teacher thank you once again enjoy eat well be well live well eat good don't eat the complex food eat the light and nourishing food and you will find your health you will start towards going your health thank you once again this is aruna patki the ayurvedic physician from india thank you